Hey, what's up, everybody? So I got a mobile radio in my car a couple of months ago, that car, Nissan Leaf, and wham, immediately got in a car accident. So <laughs> it's been gone for a while, but I got it back, and I want to show you what I'm running, specifically how I'm operating with my antenna. Let's check it out. The radio I went with is an Yesu 891 and I paired that with a Yesu ATOS 120. Now there are a lot of mobile screwdriver antennas on the market, but that's the one that I went with. A comment that I received online asked, how did I connect the ATOS to the body, grounding it or what we call bonding it? But I do want to mention, if you're interested in this antenna, you owe it to yourself to go listen to some reviews. They can be mixed with this antenna. So I wouldn't call this the top performer in screwdriver antennas. Seems to work okay for me, but I believe that's due to the copious amounts of bonding that I did. Important to note as well, this mount is not the right mount. I'll overlay what mount it should be. You guys can check that out. I'll post a link in the description. It, it holds it well enough. Um, but it would be better if it was a bit wider along the hat. And I'll just beat some of you to the punch. Yes, the car is very dirty. <laughs> I haven't washed it since, since before and after we came back from the hiking trip. So one of the reasons why I went with the ATOS is its ability to just change bands, hit the tune button, and it controls the screwdriver. You don't need a secondary box or anything like that. I'll demonstrate that. So change your band. We'll go down to 10 meters. Nothing heard because we're not tuned up for it. A little bit in there. Hit tune. And this starts the screwdriver bringing it down. And there it is. Done. Very easy. So let's walk around the bonding a little bit. So the first point of bonding that was the most important was getting a connection from the hatch to the body of the radio, uh, to the body of the car, I did that on both sides with a appreciably wide ground strap, and then on each door I did the same thing, bonding to the hinge and then bonding it to the body with ground strap. You can see that easily on this side. Basically, what you need to know is on the side of the strap that goes against the body of the car you want to use a serrated locking washer. Very important to have that. From a recommendation from Bob at HRO, he said take your ground strap, mount it, which I did have to ground uh, the paint a little bit before I learned about the serrated lock washers. Uh, connect that up and then go underneath the mount, come out and make a solid connection right there. And that's what I did. And last but not least, a big old fat strap for the hood. So generally I found after experimenting a while that the more ground straps I used, the better the noise floor got. But to make the antenna effectively work, the only ground strap that was required was connecting the hatch to the body. Adding more ground straps just helped to make the noise floor relatively low. And I can demonstrate that by turning the car on right now and you shouldn't see it come up very often or very much. Okay, that's the ambient noise floor. Let's start the car. No change. So an electric vehicle is a very difficult car to put a radio in, particularly an HF radio, uh, because of the noise that they emit. The similar thing could be said with like trucks where it's frame and, and bed on body or uh, body on frame. So by bonding all the different components together, you make it much less likely that the component, the component that's floating around on the car, like the door that's not connected or whatnot, won't pick up straight RF and bring that into the radio via the coax or the antenna or whatnot. So I highly, highly, highly recommend bonding everything that is not physically connected to the body of the car. Now, for those of you that have an electric vehicle or have something that creates a lot of RFI in your vehicle, because what happens with electric cars, right? We've got a big electric motor and we've got a lot of batteries and we have inverters. You hit the gas, it creates noise. You brake because of the regenerative braking system, it makes noise. When the drive battery wants to top off the 12 volt accessory battery, the inverter creates noise. I'm going to do another video on what I did to tackle my noise, specifically how I wired this radio up. And I found a solution that I'm very, very happy with. So I hope you 
come back for that. Anyway, I am Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Post your comments below if you have a mobile installation, you had any trouble with it, have some feedback, thoughts on the ATOS antenna, any of that. Post it below. Consider joining our Facebook and Discord as well. Great community out there. If you have any questions, they're always available. All right, guys, take it easy. See ya.